And so I heard the word move. And I, I'm asking God, move, move, move. What is move? And God said, move is the word for this house. I can do. I believe what it says about me. And I obey what it says to me. Because this is my roadmap for success. The instructions I need are contained in God's word to fulfill my purpose. Thank you, Lord Jesus for your personal word to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. We are talking about the third day miracle. Are you ready for your third day miracle? I've been praying and been seeking the face of God, and God has said some things. And of course, my last time we talked about the third day miracle, we talked about how people began to prophesy their own third day miracle. And uh, we basically, you know, because we're not going to go over this all uh, today, but we basically told, told you about how Jesus prophesied his third day miracle. And, uh, and we said it had to be your miracle was in your mouth. You're going to have to open your mouth and prophesy your third day miracle. Now, and I began to go back and rehearse on how God had, had set the consecration up for us. You know, the, the last three days in, the, in, in December, we ended up finishing strong with the fast and the consecration. And on that Wednesday, on that Thursday night was the third day of that fast, and God told me to speak on prophesied third day miracle. And so I began to do that, and today is the third day of our uh, January fast. In other words, the first, second, and third. And so I'm prophesying your miracle in your mouth on the third day. There's a miracle in your mouth on the third day. Now, turn to uh, Exodus. I'm going to show you. We're going to read some scriptures. And I want to show you that if we begin to realize, don't take these words as a word just coming from a man. Uh, Grab them and say, Lord, I received these words from me for my third day miracle. See, things just don't happen by uh, happenstance. A lot of times the, the Spirit of God begins to orchestrate some things. Now, we may not understand what he's doing, but if we just obey him, it, it won't be long before he'll unfold his plan for us. Um, let's look at Genesis chapter 19. We're going to re read some uh, scriptures. And I want to show you now about this third day miracle. See, we're in a season right now of supernatural manifestations. We're in a season of sign and one, signs and wonders. We're in a season where God wants to do some supernatural things in our lives. But we must be ready and willing to open up. Now, there'll be some things, that, some challenges that'll come our way. Because if you'll notice, the first day and the second day, challenges come. But we're going to read some scripture where it says, don't worry about the first day and the second day. Just be ready for what? The third day. Amen. Exodus 19. Hallelujah. Exodus 19. And we're going to verse 10. reading in verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. Oh, Jesus. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people unto my Sinai. In verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day. Mm. Somebody say third day. Third day. In the morning. He didn't even wait till the midnight hour. He came in the morning. Mm. And there was thunder and lightning and the thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. They were going to meet with who? God. And they stood at the neither part of the mount. Now listen to what happened. He said, the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I want you to sanctify the people. In other words, I want you to consecrate them. In other words, I want you to get them ready. Because I'm about to make a move in their lives. I'm about to cause a shift on the third day. And he said, I believe that's what God is doing. The prophet said it earlier. There's some, there's some things that's about to go through. He's about to make a shift. But we got, he said, hey, be ready. Be prepared for the third day. Don't just come in and don't just wallow into the third day. That's why we had to finish the year strong. Because we entered 2016 or uh, 2016, we entered this year in power. We entered in strength because what? We finished strong. 
Glory and we had the testimonies on how God allowed us to finish strong. We did that because of our confession, because of the words of our mouth. And, and, and because, now when you enter into something strong, you just keep up with the, with the, keep the momentum up. You keep moving, right? Never that worry. And so what happened is, he said, prepare the people, consecrate them. And that's what God told me to tell you. He said, get ready. Prepare them. See, it's my job to prepare. It's my job to give that word. It's my, God, my job to show you that if we get in position and get ready for the third day and confess it out of our mouth, now we're going to find out there's going to be some things we're going to have to do besides just confessing it. When, God, when you start confessing it, God tells you some things to do. You're going to have to obey him. Glory to God. Glory to God. But you see, you still have to open your mouth and begin to confess, I receive my third day miracle. Then God will begin to do some things in your life. Now turn to, turn to Genesis chapter 22. We're going to go through some scriptures real speedily here because we're going to do some confessions. I, I want to ask them, I'm asking God to remove the scales off of our eyes so we can begin be ready for the third day miracle. God has set us up here for, with this consecration. He set us up with this, uh, uh, this fasting. He's setting us up to, to give ourselves first unto him. And as we begin to do that, he has to reward us. Oh, and he's going to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Just like he told Moses to get the people ready, he's telling us to get ready. Glory to God. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep. Genesis 22. Oh, Exodus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's stealing. He's stealing. 22. He's stealing. He's stealing. Genesis 22. Okay. In verse, verse 1. one. Genesis 22 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abra Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early. Early. And saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clayed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Jesus. Abraham looked, lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Yes. Now listen to this. He had obeyed God. Now, a lot of times when you see the movies, it, it says, uh, you know, it's like the movies are showing like Abraham wept and cried because he had to sacrifice his son. Scripture does not back that up. When God spoke to Abraham, Abraham got up early the next morning to obey God. Because if you read on in Scripture, the New Testament, it says he knew that God would raise his son even from the dead if necessary. And all through Scripture, you know, if you read the Scripture, you know what it says? It says, God honored Abraham for the sacrifice of his son. It didn't say because he was going to. It said because he did it. You see, when out of his heart, when he, when he made that, uh, uh, that, de that declaration, when he decided, I'm going to obey God, God said, well, I consider it done already. When you decide you're going to obey God, he already considered it done. Now here, they had been wandering around, and I say wandering around, the, the, according to scripture, he had uh, he, it took him three days before he saw the plan of God. It took him three days before he saw the place of God. But you know, he never got, scripture never say, he never got weary about the first day or about the second day. It was the third day that the plan of God showed up. And, I'm, and I want to challenge you. Don't get weary about what you're going through now. Open your mouth and declare God is a, has prepared for you a third-day miracle. On the third day, your miracle will be manifested. It doesn't matter if it's on the, the second day or the 22nd day. You're declaring God's going to show up. You're not going to get weary in well doing because I believe that we're going to see a move of God like never before. You're going to see a move of God in your life. And all you got to do is what? Prepare yourself. For the fire of God. And the thing that I want you to see here, and, and I guess that's what that, that's another thing that God has been speaking to me about this third day miracle, mm. is that you're going to have to prepare yourself. Jesus. You're going to have to pray and prepare yourself because in the process of it, you don't know what God's going to tell you to do. Mm. And Jesus. if you're not prepared, you're not going to do the hard thing. 
See, everybody's look, it's easy to do something easy. Mm. But it's not easy. <laughs> it's not, you're not going to do it quickly. If it's something you don't want to do, mm. and it's something hard. Oh, Jesus. And so that's why we got to get rid of us. Mm. And know that God done said, do this. Jesus. I got to do this thing. Jesus. Amen. This is how we're going to get this third day miracle. Yes. It's going to be because we're going to hear God. Jesus. And we're going to obey. Thank you, Lord. Abraham heard God. Mm. And so he got his son, he got his offering, and he went up. Yes. And so we're going to have to do exactly the same thing. Knowing that God's going to provide. Thank you. What's hard for you may not be hard for me. Mm. What's hard for me may not be hard for you. Mm. Doing this, you know, this consecration, this dedication, you know, uh, my baby, grandbaby, Carissa, she said, well, Papa, how much longer? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, then, and then we began to just share with her about, you know, the difference in the Daniel fasts. And, but you know what? In the natural, it hurt me that she was struggling because I wanted her to eat. But she was willing to find out, she was willing to endure whatever it took to go through the consecration. Are you willing to endure whatever it takes to go through the consecration, believing that we've heard from God? Mm. And so we, we sat around and we talked with them and we just kind of shared with them that, you know, that you need to, you know, uh, put on a paper, uh, you know, tell me what, tell God what you want him to do. Not what you want Papa to do or not what you want Mama to do, but what do you want God to do? And I kind of asked her, I said, what you want God to do? And she told me, and I said, ooh, that's good. What do you want him to do? You can confess your third day miracle, but if you don't know what you want to do, how you know when he's going to do it? You need to begin to get yourself settled and don't limit him. When he says, you know, do some things, you got to do it. You want your car paid off and you saved up $500 and he tells you, give that $500 to so-and-so or so-and-so. You're thinking, well, I'm trying to save up to pay off my car. Well, the $500 is not going to be enough anyway. You know you owe a whole lot more than $500. So if God tells you to give it to someone, just obey him. That may be a hard thing for you to do, but just obey him and watch him work. Glory to God. Yeah, you got to be prepared. You got to be prepared to obey. Yes. No matter what God tell you to do, you got to be prepared to obey. We tell you all the time about how we were believing God for a house. We had $1,000, $1,000 saved up for our house. But God said to us, give the $1,000 away. We gave the $1,000 away, and God moved us into that house. And when we got to the clothing, instead of us paying money out, well, they gave us some money. Mm. God can work a supernatural Jesus. miracle when you obey God. She did the Glory to God. And it's not going to be easy up front. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so this was an example of God telling somebody something hard to do. Yeah. But they done it. They mm -hmm. did it, okay? It was hard for us. But apparently, was it hard for Abraham? It, it wasn't hard. It doesn't no, seem no, like it was. No, I'm saying a hard thing. I okay. That's what I'm saying, okay. a hard thing. When they're talking about your only son. Yeah. The son you love. Go and give, you know, uh, I'll be master sacrifice. And we're thinking from the natural, oh, my God, how hard would that be? But apparently, Abraham must have saw something different. Because he got up early the next morning. Come on, Isaac. We're going to go obey God. Mm, Jesus. Jesus. Second Kings chapter 20. Glory to God. Now that's what the example of the third day, getting the third, third day miracle with doing something. And it says, in these days was Hezekiah sick until death. This is Second Kings chapter 20. And we're going to begin reading in verse 1. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Glory Jesus. To God. Hallelujah. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Ammon, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Mm. Now many of us, we would have just went on and cried and, and got our house in order. That's all we would have done. But then he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, Remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. Oh, now stop right there. <laughs> the reason he was able to petition God wow. was because he had walked in with him what? In truth and in a perfect, perfect heart. heart. So he had set something up already to go with God, to go my to God, him. My God, my God. So we got to make sure that we are positioned already. 
but for, you know, to go with him. And of course, this is in the Old Testament. Now we come to him with the blood of Christ. Now we come to him with the righteousness of Christ. But we have to know who we are. Mm, glory to God. Truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is right mm. in thy sight. Yes. Which is good, really. <laughs> and Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus say the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Mm. I have seen thy tears. Jesus. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. The third day. <laughs> hey, Glory to God. On the third day, I'm going to heal you. And he got this healing. Why? Because he turned his face towards the wall and he began to tell God about what I have done. Jesus. God, I've been good, yes. in other words. I've done what you told Jesus. me to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it said, and on the third day, he said, mm. I'm going to raise you up. My God. Glory. Keep reading. Well, where was I? And I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. Okay, now stop. Before now he said, first I'm going to hear you. What he was crying out for was just to extend his years, right? Now let's see what all God's going to do for him. And I will add unto... Unto thy days, 15 years, mm -hmm. and I will deliver thee and this city go, out uh, of the hand of the king of Osera, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. He didn't ask for all that. No, but he, but he sought the face of God. Mm. See, God's going to give you more than you asked for. Make Jesus your Lord. Now you have his righteousness. So he said, I'm going to add the 15 years. That's really what you was concerned about. Then I'm going to deliver this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And then I'm going to defend this, defend this city for my sake. And for my servant David's sake. So I'm going to do exceeding abundantly above more than you can ask. See, there's something you've been asking God for. You may not understand, you know, what's going on, but you've been asking God. And he's going to do more than you ask him for. Just go to him. And out of your mouth, declare, Father, I'm positioning myself for my third day miracle. That's because of what the, we, we, we've decreed that in this house. That's because we, you know, your spirit has been opened up in this house. And so as you begin to prepare yourself, position yourself, now you open your mouth up and say, I receive my third day miracle. Now, what is your third day miracle? It's on your paper. It's in your heart. Wherever it is, confess it and decree it and declare it. And it will come to pass. Esther, Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's read. Yes, no, let's read after. You sure you don't want to do this first? Oh, first? Okay. Hosea? Hosea chapter 6. Then we'll come back to Esther. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Got to give them a chance to find Hosea. They can find Esther. Hosea chapter 6. <laughs> Once you find Daniel, just keep going. Toward the, are you there? Hosea chapter 6. It says, come and let us, let us return unto the Lord. Mm. For he has torn and he will heal us. See, that's what Hezekiah was praying, right? Said, now let's, let's turn back to God. Apparently, they had gotten away from him. There's some something that'll slip in our lives. Maybe it's our prayer. Maybe it's our meditating in the word. Maybe it's our compassion. There's something that may have slipped. Well, here, let's just return back to God and let's see what he'll do. Mm. Okay, and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, will he revive us? Mm. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his, his sight. sight. After two days, he'll revive us. Mm. In the third day. But the third day, he's going to raise us up to live in his sight. That's when your manifestation of your miracle is going to be manifest. It's gonna see. It's gonna, you're going to be able to experience your third day miracle. 
because you've returned back to God. You, you've, you've given him your life, his, his life back. You begin to decree his will in your life. You begin to ask God to take the scales off your eyes. You want a love for God more than you want a love for people and the things of this world. Once you return to God, the third day miracle is set up. You position yourself for your third day miracle. Now let's turn to Esther chapter 4. And Esther chapter 4 began reading in verse 15. Then Esther bade them return. Yeah, before, yeah, we're going to start reading. Let's, let's, let's kind of set up a, a background of what's happening here. <clears throat> Mordecai has overheard uh, Haman uh, tell the king that we need to kill all the Jews. And so what ends up happening is, you know, Mordecai is, uh, you know, is, is uh, lamenting outside the gate. Esther sees him out there and she says, what's going on? So, uh, you know, they, they go tell Esther, Esther, there's a decree going out that all the Jews are going to be killed. And so uh, Mordecai wants you to go tell, you know, the king, go to them on behalf of the king. And this is what Esther said. This is what, this is what caught my attention. <clears throat> Esther said, well, I hadn't been before the, the king in 30 days. And you know anybody that goes just show up in front of the king, he can have them killed. Or he will have them killed unless he puts out his golden scepter. And so, uh, Mordecai said, well, look, you know, I don't care about that. Because, but if you don't move now, we're going to be saved by somebody else. God will raise up deliverance from somewhere else, but you and your people are going to be lost. See, God is looking for someone that will stand in the gap, that will rise up. Rise up above the circumstances. Rise up above persecution. Rise up above, you know, the norms of the world and begin to declare the word of God. we got to stand flat-footed and bold-faced and teach the gospel. Preach the gospel. I don't care what, how it goes against society, how it goes against what you believe. The gospel is the only thing that's going to cause us to prosper. And I've got to declare it and decree it. So, uh, the, she goes and she said, uh, um, you, now you got a choice. you got a decision. Then she says, okay, I'll do it, but then go fast for me. Now, now, let's pick it up in verse 15. Then Esther bade them return to Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shechem, and fast ye for me. Mm. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mm. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded. Keep reading. Now, in other words, that means they fasted, they prayed, and they prepared themselves. Mm. Esther was prepared to die after the fast. Are you prepared to give up things that the Spirit of God is trying to get out of your life. Now, he, he's not doing that to make you suffer. He's doing that to bring, take you into your next level of your ministry. Mm. Maybe a ministry in your family. Mm. Maybe a ministry on your job. Maybe a ministry in, this, in, 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 in ministry, church. But whatever it is, ask God to continue to direct you. So let's continue to read here at 5 and 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court mm. of the king's house, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, oh, Jesus. over against the gate of the house. Mm. And it was so when the king saw Esther, mm. the queen, standing in the court, Jesus. that she obtained favor Jesus. in his sight. Mm. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Mm. So Esther drew not near and touched the top of the scepter. Notice, Esther had decided to go to the king. But notice what she did. She prepared herself by doing what? Putting on her royal apparel. She didn't just decide, okay, now I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray, but I'm going to get up right here like I am right now and I'm just going to walk in here. No, she prepared herself. She put on her royal apparel. She put on royalty because she knew she was going to face royalty. 
You see, there are some things we're going to have to do. We're going to have to prepare ourselves. Even though we're fasted, even though we prayed, even though that she had all the Jews fasting and praying, all the people fasting and praying, all her maidens fasting and praying, there was still something she had to do. She had to go see the king. But she couldn't go with her everyday clothes, without ordinary clothes. She had to put on her royal apparel. I believe when the king saw her in that royal apparel, he hadn't seen her in a month. But I believe when he saw her in that royal apparel, I believe he said, who is that beautiful thing there? He stretched out his scepter and said, let her in. Esther had presented herself in such a way that it appeased the king. In other words, it caused her, he gave her favor in his sight, and he wanted her to come into his presence. God wants me to come into his presence, but I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to repent of all the sin. I'm going to repent of everything I know he's not pleased with, and I'm going into his presence. Now, when you, when you know you're going into the presence of somebody that's the king, then you just don't, and, and, and you're going to prepare yourself, and you later you're looking in the mirror, and you're making sure your hair's right. You're making sure everything is okay. You're making sure everything is perfect and in line because you're going to what? You're going to see somebody important. Well, when you're going to God, in this dispensation, you want to make sure that you're going to him with everything right. We're going to him with a repentant heart. Come into him with a clean hand and a pure heart. So you repent before you go, and you say, God, I'm coming to you right now. I'm coming to you because I need a third-day miracle. We've been decreeing three day, a third-day miracle. We've been decreeing things happening on the third day, and I'm opening my mouth. I've got my, my, my list. I've prepared my heart, and I want my third-day miracle. This is the third day of, uh, of January. So, you know, start right now. Begin to declare and decree your third-day miracle for this month. Thank you, Lord. We've been, heard, we've been hearing testimony after testimony after testimony of what God is doing in our lives. Well, yeah, he can do the same thing and wants to do the same thing for you. What do you need from him? Thank you, Jesus. What do you want from him? I want and I need my third day miracle. Close your eyes. Father, you thank you, Lord God. You've heard our prayers. You've heard my prayers, Father, for my third day miracle. You've heard the prayers of your people for their third day miracle. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that as we come before you as one, I thank you because of unity right now.